Hi. So today I'm going to talk about student power and organizing here in Kansas. Uh, just to start uh, an introduction on me, uh, my name is Birdie. I'm a junior at KU studying communications and information journalism. I'm currently an organizer uh, with the voting rights nonprofit Loudlight, uh, specifically our student power campaign. Uh, but I have been organizing uh, in Kansas for the last couple of years, and I've been with Loudlight since the spring of 2021. Uh, so I'm just going to give an overview um, about the student power campaign, and then I'll go into a little bit about um, organizing, uh, grassroots organizing specifically um, here in Kansas. So uh, the main issue that we started with for the student power campaign was that students don't know the power of their vote. Um, in the 2020 election, young people proved their power to transform our nation by turning out to vote at record high levels. Um, yet here in Kansas, we don't really see voting infrastructure. Um, we have a little bit here at KU, um, but across the rest of the state at our colleges and universities, we don't really see um, that infrastructure. Um, and so then, according to uh, Insolve data um, from universities across Kansas, 30 to 60% of registered students aren't actually voting. Um, and a study done by Circle found that the majority of those who surveyed um, cited accessibility to polling locations or transportation as the reason uh, for not voting. Uh, so specifically at KU, uh, what made us start this was that we noticed the university isn't providing resources for voting. Um, I know this past year, I personally did not receive any um, voter registration or education information from uh, the university outside of the work that I do um, outside of the organizations that I'm a part of, um, which means that this information isn't getting disseminated to students um, unless they're heavily involved in organizations that promote civic engagement. Um, another portion is, like I said, from the INSOLV data, registered students aren't showing up. 86% um, of eligible students at KU are registered. Of those 86%, only around 71 are actually showing up to the polls on election day. Um, that means there's a huge part of the electorate at KU uh, that just aren't voting. Um, and then campus voting isn't accessible. Uh, our polling location moves around um, sometimes, sometimes it's in two locations, sometimes it's in one. Um, and it is true that over the last um, eight years, um, eight or so years since the 2016 election, uh, we have seen a lot of um, voter turnout. We've seen an increased amount, but it's still really difficult um, to know where to vote. You know, and if you live on Daisy Hill and the <laughs> polling location is in the Memorial Union, you're having to go all the way across campus um, just to vote. And that's not very accessible. Um, and so sort of the trajectory of the student power campaign uh, in the fall, we started with um, representatives um, across different universities. They would lobby to their community, um, their student government, their administration, their local voting officials, um, and we would sort of, you know, build support that way, um, focusing on campuses individually. Um, again, meeting with student governments, um, getting that widespread support that we need in order to succeed. Um, and then right now, we're at about step three. We're currently researching and writing a bill um, for the Kansas State Legislature to make voting infrastructure a requirement um, across college campuses to um, ensure that it happens this year, every year, um, and that it's a long-term commitment from universities and from the state to have college students voting. Um, and then following that, we'll of course lobby the Kansas State Legislature and the Kansas Board of Regents um, to get it passed, to implement it, um, and have it be a permanent fixture for universities. Um, another big part of what we were focusing on um, and are continuing to focus on um, in our efforts to get this passed is the community connection. Um, of course, um, I have a little bit uh, <laughs> of a deeper understanding of our connection between Lawrence and KU, being that I go here, I live in Lawrence, um, but this is the same for 
uh, universities across Kansas. Um, you know, we often discuss the Lawrence and KU community as separate entities, but everything that Lawrence does and that KU does impacts each other. We experience the same um, issues and our communities are impacted in the same way from housing, the job market, social issues. Um, a lot of our events and culture are intertwined. Um, and, you know, that really allows us to have the ability to impact each other in a positive way. Um, and that's a big thing where KU is a really big part of the Center of Lawrence and um, increasing voting accessibility for students also increases it for our community. People can come to campus, they can vote, they can vote early. Um, and it's the same for other places like Pittsburgh or Manhattan. You've got these um, universities that are a big, big part of the town. Um, and it would just be irresponsible to neglect the interconnectivity of our universities and our communities. Um, so some of the benefits of the student power campaign, um, sort of our defense for why we should expand voting accessibility um, is first representation. Uh, by expanding voting accessibility, we can feel represented. We can not only feel represented, but be represented at the local level, the state level, the national level, whatever. We are representing ourselves um, as a part of the electorate, which historically has not um, been the case. Um, and then a big plus for, you know, the Board of Regents and for um, the state of Kansas that we're focusing on is that um, expanded voting increases retention. A big issue that we face in Kansas is that once people are done with school, they leave, they go other places. Um, I love Kansas. I'm a born and raised Kansan. Um, and I, I genuinely believe that by seeing your wants and needs reflected um, in the decisions made by our officials, whether that is our state representative or someone on the Lawrence um, City Commission, um, it makes you want to stay. It makes you feel um, welcome and safe and proud to live where you are. And I think that that um, will really increase retention or, you know, just incentivize staying here. Um, and then, of course, civic engagement, um, encouraging voting now um, sets a habit, uh, keeps it in your mind to continue to vote wherever you go, whether or not you stay in Kansas or students leave. It creates a sense of purpose behind voting um, and that continues on even after you graduate. So that was the student power campaign, where we're at now, our purpose, all of those things. Um, so now I'm going to go into um, grassroots organizing here in Kansas, you know, on the local level, really getting in and helping your community and just some tips that um, I've learned and that we talk about here at Loud Light a lot. So first is know your community. Um, it's the number one part of grassroots organizing is figuring out where do I need help? Where do other people need help? And where can I make an impact? Um, a really big part of this is talking with your community. The issues that I have are not necessarily issues that everyone is facing, but there are issues that we all face. Um, a really big thing that we did when we started the student power campaign was talking with students, you know, do you want to vote? Do you recognize an issue with the way that we vote? Talking with students about what they need, what they would want from our campaign um, and really making sure that we keep that in mind as we continue the work. Um, another really big thing that we like to do here at Loud Light is power mapping. It's a really great way to sort of get going, to get stuff started. Um, so power mapping is exactly what it sounds like. You're mapping your power, you're mapping your network, you're figuring out who do I know, who are our allies, who is our opposition, um, and a really important part, again, our constituents, who is impacted, um, who in our community will benefit from this work outside of us who are doing the work. Um, <clears throat> and so we like to break them down into targets, primary and secondary. So primary are the people who are um, making the decisions to change the problem, to, to resolve an issue, um, and secondary people. Um, or secondary targets are people who can influence those decision makers. So, you know, our our primary targets for the student power campaign would be the Kansas Board of Regents, university administration, state legislature, leaders, um, and then our secondary 
um, influences would be, you know, student organizations, um, student supporters, community advocates, um, even our um, university student governments uh, would be secondary targets. Um, and then once you've power mapped, building relationships um, with those people, with your allies, with your constituents, possibly um, with your opponents is really important. Um, and I think something really important to keep in mind is that relationships are built on shared values, a mutual commitment and consistency. You know, you can't just say, oh, hey, like, let's have this meeting. Let me um, fill you in on what I'm doing. Here are some resources for you. I'll take some resources for myself. Um, and then we're done. Never going to meet again. That doesn't work. Um, so I think it's really important to remember um, consistency when it comes to things like this, because your shared values probably aren't going to change, um, but your commitment and the consistency will. Um, this is why one on one meetings are really important. Um, and that's sort of how you get started with utilizing your power map is having one on one meetings with people, letting them know this is the this is this is what I'm doing. This is why we're doing this. Um, let me let me tell you about it. Let me let me let you in on on this great work that we're doing. Here are some resources that I have. Do you have any resources for me? And then let's make a plan to keep working together, to start working together um, and to have a relationship long term. Um, and those relationships pop up at the beginning of your work, at the end of your work, all throughout. It's how you make progress. It's how you get work done. Um, I know that us at the Student Power Campaign, there's so much work that we would not be able to do without our allies at KU and our allies in the legislature um, and our allies across Kansas. Um, yeah. And then my last thing is that organizing gets difficult. People don't want you to succeed. I know that there are a lot of people in Kansas who don't want students to have um, expanded voting accessibility. There's a lot of people in Kansas who want to take our voting rights away to make it more difficult to vote. Um, and that's something that we definitely have struggled with last semester and are continuing to struggle with now as we approach the state legislature. Um, but we always talk about um, just remembering ad astra prospera. Our state <laughs> says it best um, to the stars through difficulty. Um, there really is no way through other than to persevere. So that is all that I have to say about the Student Power Campaign and about grassroots organizing here in Kansas. Um, you are more than welcome <laughs> to support us on social media at loud underscore light. There are plenty of ways um, to give to us. You can donate, you can sign our petition, you can do lots of things. Um, but yeah, thank you. Go out there, do great work and uh, keep making Kansas better.